Miami Hurricane season gets started this week. Entering the season on the recruiting trail, Miami currently sits at number 10. But depending on how this season goes, it could go either way. And the Canes could be looking at a top five class. Could they be looking at a top 15 class? We will see. We got Azubi Charles on this video. And we're going to get into it. But before we do, Miami fans, do me a favor. Hit subscribe to the On3 Recruit Channel, the best recruiting channel on all of YouTube. We talk a ton of Miami Hurricane recruiting. We want you to be a part of it. Go ahead and hit subscribe for me, please. All right, let's bring in Azubi Charles of Cane Sport and... We're going to get to the big matchup this week, and we know there's going to be over 100 big-time recruits at this Miami-Florida game in the swamp. You're going to be there. We're going to get to that in a minute, but I want to get your overall thoughts about Miami's number 10-ranked recruiting class. Uh, what would you say are the highlights or the strengths of the class heading into the season? Yeah, I really like this class at the moment as we're just days away from kickoff for the 2024 campaign. Heading into this recruiting cycle, Miami made it a big emphasis on recruiting defensive backs as a position of need. Mm -hmm. They've landed a handful of blue chip prospects at that position. Guys like Drake Stubbs, Bryce Fitzgerald, and Jabari Antoine, who are all top 150 guys, kind of headlined that defensive back class for the Canes. But you also have guys like SJ Alifaituli out of Bishop Gorman, Gerard Pringle, who's a top 175 running back, and Luke Nickel, kind of the leader of the class at quarterback out of Midland, Georgia. So right now, as we head into the season, I really do like this class, and I do think there's still a bit of room for improvement, but I love where they stand right now. Yeah, uh, last year, this was an incomplete class heading into the season. It was defensive line. That was the main focus heading into the season. Is it the same this cycle, or what would you say the biggest need still to fill is? I would say Miami's done a great job of filling that. Like I said, defensive back was kind of like the, hey, we need to, to land some big guys at this position because in the next few years, that's going to be a position need for the team. So this year, definitely defensive back. And I think they landed you know, the guys that they wanted to. Obviously, they missed out on the big fish, DJ Pickett. But I feel like they're going to still chip away and chip away at him until, you know, they can't anymore. Another position need, I think they kind of need to address is wide receiver as we kind of get through these last few months of the recruiting cycle. Right now, they currently have one uh, four-star commit, Dalen Upshaw, who I'm a big fan of, and I think he's going to continue to rise this fall. But I do want to see them to add one or two more playmakers at that wideout position. Yeah, Upshaw could be a gem of that class. He's he's already off to a great start. So speaking of the Canes being off to a great start, we enter the season at number 10. How do you think Miami finishes this year? Is it higher, lower, where are they at? Because last year it was a top five class. The year before it was number seven, I believe, and currently sitting at top 10. Yeah, I think Miami will finish in the top 10 for a third straight year and a coach Chris Ball and potentially push for another top five class if things go their way. I think the main factor in this is going to be play on the field, in my opinion. I think if they figure things out on the field and match that with, you know, their their efforts on the recruiting trail, it could be scary come December with Coach Chris Ball and that staff pushing for some, you know, other commits elsewhere if they can get those wins on the field. But right now I'm pretty confident saying a top 10 class and if things start clicking on the gridiron, the top five for sure. Yeah, you know, in year one and two, Mario Cristobal, he recruits with the with the wind at his back. You know, they got all the hope. They got all the excitement building around the Miami program for two years. But now year three, it's time. You got to prove it on the field. And this week, when, the, when Miami heads to Gainesville to play the Gators, they'll have a chance to prove it. How important is this game for Miami recruiting? I know it's not make or break. You know, if they win or lose, it's not going to make or break this class. But what does this game mean for the recruits watching? I think this game is one of, if not the most important game for recruits this year. You know, it's your in-state rival. It's a program that you're recruiting against, you know, every single year, some of the top prospects in the state, out of state, wherever they may be. And also it's both year three for Coach Cristobal and Coach Napier. It's time to put up or shut up. You've been yeah. selling you know, these dreams of, hey, we're making this program a program. We're making this program come back to what it used to be. Now, what better way than to start off the 2024 year against one of, if not your biggest rival, with over 100 recruits that you guys are both recruiting in that um, stadium. Super, super excited to see what goes down. Like I said, it's time to put up or shut up for both of these coaches, and I'm excited to see who comes out on top in this one. Yeah, some some battleground recruitments that both teams have come out on top. You know, whether it's wide receiver Joshua Moore, who ends up in Gainesville, uh, Hilton Stubbs, the great DB out of Jacksonville, who's now committed to Miami. Also, a guy like DJ Pickett who both Miami and Florida missed on, but would love to flip from LSU. They're all going to be in the swamp. Who are you keeping an eye on as far as a recruit that this game could impact? Yeah, you named two of them, uh, Joshua Moore and DJ Pickett. Mm -hmm. Josh Moore has made it clear that he's not signed any paperwork yet. And if the Hurricanes outdo the Gators, you know, as the season goes on, things could get interesting in his recruitment. 
that's something that, you know, you love to hear as a fan of recruiting two in-state programs battling out for one of the top wide receivers in the country. Also with DJ Pickett, he's had this game circled on his calendar, you know, during the summertime and said, hey, regardless of where I come in, I will be in the swamp on August 31st watching those two teams. I think for both these programs, this is a chance to say, hey, DJ, listen, we might have missed out on you on the first swing, but hey, look at what we did against this, you know, in-state program that you're being recruited by. Give us another chance or however you may, you may say it. I think this is a great, great opportunity for both Miami and Florida to put their best foot forward with DJ Pickett come August 31st. I think you said it best. This is a great opportunity for both programs to finally put it on the field in person. Lots of eyes on this one, not just you and I, but there's going to be hundreds of recruits watching as well. So Miami fans, talk to us. Who do you think is one of the most important recruits that will be on the sidelines for this one? Let us know. Comment section below. Big game coming up this weekend. Well, you've made it to the end of today's video, but there's hundreds more videos on the On3 Recruits channel for you to check out. And also, while you're here, hit subscribe.